New Jersey, Maine, Delaware, and the District of Columbia. Those seven medical marijuana jurisdictions are interesting because they have laws that provide for state regulated and licensed centers to produce and dispense medical marijuana to patients. And these laws are noteworthy for at least two reasons. First, they are detailed and nuanced laws that, uh, that regulate uh, the following issues. How, to how and where to cultivate marijuana, process it, label it, package it, transport it, store it, distribute it, sell it, and tax it. Those laws in those jurisdictions and those regulations, which in some cases amount to several hundred pages in length, go into great detail about how those things are done. As such, these medical marijuana laws provide useful templates and roadmaps for states like Indiana to explore how to set up marijuana taxation and regulation schemes. The second reason these medical marijuana laws are noteworthy is that New Mexico and Colorado in particular have been licensing medical marijuana dispensaries for some time now while Rhode Island, New Jersey, and Maine have awarded state licenses to dispensaries which are right now in the process of getting started. And again, what's notable is that the state-sponsored distribution of medical marijuana in accords with carefully crafted state laws has not been met with federal government interference. Let me repeat, the federal government has not interfered with responsible state regulatory schemes for medical marijuana. Just within the last week, uh, Senator, I mean, Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey had an opportunity to review what Senator Italian called the Cole Memo from the federal government discussing what federal policy would be with respect to enforcing uh, federal law against states with medical marijuana laws. And Governor Christie, a former U.S. attorney for New Jersey, read that memo and said, my state has nothing to fear. Accordingly, I'm going to go ahead with licensing six medical marijuana distribution centers uh, and I feel safe that the federal government will not come in uh, and interfere with these plans. Similarly, the U.S. Attorney for Arizona uh, a couple weeks ago uh, offered the same analysis, saying, uh, I am not going to use federal law to interfere with Arizona's recent well uh, and nuanced uh, regulatory scheme. Let me speak for a moment uh, about taxation. Uh, Senator Italian mentioned the State uh, Tax Stamp Act. Uh, now, what, it's easy to ridicule California for some of the mess that it's made of its medical marijuana laws, but one thing California has long done successfully with respect to medical marijuana is to collect tax revenue. According to California's Board of Equalization, there is currently between 700 million to $1.3 billion in annual retail sales of medical marijuana each year. And those sales are subject to sales tax, reaping sales tax revenues of up to $105 million each year for local and state coffers. This fact has some significance for Indiana. Indeed, Harvard economist Jeffrey Myron estimates that Indiana could raise as much as $44 million annually through sales tax alone if it taxed and regulated marijuana distribution. I've already mentioned that states are considering uh, taxing and regulating marijuana. Those, states those efforts appear to be gaining substantial momentum. In California, voters narrowly rejected such a scheme in 2010. That was put on the ballot there. And in the past two years, legislators in California, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Vermont, and Washington all saw marijuana tax and regulated bills introduced in their chambers. In 2012, next year, residents of Colorado and Washington State will likely have an opportunity to vote on regulate and tax initiatives that will likely appear on those ballots, while in other states, including Missouri, uh, others are in, while in other states, uh, people are actively collecting signatures now to put the question before their fellow voters next November. In short, Today's hearing comes at a propitious moment in the evolution of marijuana law reform. What lessons have we learned? States that have decriminalized or otherwise lessened penalties for marijuana have not seen negative consequences. And again, in my written remarks, I have quite detailed sources uh, for the studies that show that there has not been any evidence of increased uh, drug use. 
uh, in states where marijuana has been decriminalized or otherwise legalized. Citizens who live under decriminalization laws consume marijuana at rates less than or comparable to those who live in regions where the possession of marijuana remains a criminal offense. Uh, no increase in marijuana or other drug use among young people. And finally, uh, what we've learned again from California uh, is that not only has California realized significant tax revenue, marijuana has not increased, marijuana use has not increased uh, in that state since 1996. So let me conclude by saying that this committee's work is timely and important. The public recognizes that our marijuana laws have done more harm than good, and it is time to replace costly and failed policies with sensible and effective ones. As the members of this committee look to, to a number of other, what other states have done or seek to do, you will discover that there are sound, evidence-based policy alternatives that will better protect the safety, health, and fiscal well-being of Indianans than do the state's current marijuana laws. Thank you very, very much. Yes. Yes. Colorado has very, very detailed regulations. It's not in statute, but Colorado has incredibly detailed regulations. Uh, New Mexico has not only good regulations, but a good uh, background state law that's clinically oriented. Um, and I would bring your attention, you know, and Rhode Island as well. So I would, if I were to choose a couple states that serve as particularly good models, I would look to New Mexico, R Rhode Island, uh, and Colorado at this point in time. Thank you very much.